everyone welcome back to rts and welcome to some chit chatter today talking about getting a better cut with these intricate dies that's what we're going to talk about today i've been playing you can see i've been playing and playing and playing and i thought i would turn the camera on and talk about that and review the supply because i'm going to talk about this chrome precision base plate this is the newer version so i'm going to talk about that then also to the spellbinders two and one i got asked about that and then something that just hit the market which was these lovely crochet thinlets uh uh, you know, dually dies is what I call them, um, but they're called crochet by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to talk about that and uh, what I really think about them. Okay. So yes, sometimes it's nice if you can buy things in person, you can see what you get, but we'll talk about that. Okay. So um, I have some new subscribers to the channel and some new scrapbookers in general to this channel. So the couple things I want to cover right off the bat is that how do I organize my dies is that I simply have them on a piece of magnetic sheet on a piece of cardstock and put inside an Avery L pocket. That's as simple as I do. And then you'll notice that there is a number on the bottom because I inventory my dies, okay? And how I inventory them is that I absolutely have a catalog binder. And if I would go to the section where I have my dies and if I go to number 45, right there is that set. Okay, uh, right there, 45, 45, and of course my Prima doily, that goes right there. Okay, so that is how I organize them. And there will be two videos listed below showing you how I organize my dies and then also to this catalog binder. Okay, so check that out for me for more details. Okay, but I wanted to show that. So when you have a die that's giving you fits, you can see that in my inventory binder, I absolutely included this uh, cut, but I also used the image that didn't cut out very well because I wanted it to be a reminder when I see this, uh, when I look at number 45 and say, oh yeah, that prima die, I gotta go, I gotta put a little extra work into this. And frankly, sometimes I'll skip over it because of this, okay? And so if you have a die that doesn't give you a good cut, put that bad cut in your inventory binder or put a notation that you're gonna have to do an extra step to get a good cut. That's just something I've learned over the years. Um, representation is the key. I learned that from Tiffany Spaulding. Yes, okay. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. And then also too with that, please keep in mind one thing, that no matter what you do is not gonna be exactly of what I'm showing. And so your results are going to vary. So each die is going to cut different. Each manufacturer is gonna cut different. These are Prima, these are Sizzix. This is Echo Park. Uh, these are American Crafts. They all cut so different. The thickness of a die is different. The actual outside lip is different on a die. And then also, too, your platform is different. Your machine is different. Uh, the paper weight is different. Um, the kind of paper you're using. And then also, too, the thickness of your cutting plates is different. And then if your cutting plates are old versus new, that makes a difference. If your machine is new or old, that makes a difference when it comes to cutting any type of die, okay? Especially intricate dies. So with all of that, keep in mind, all those variables are gonna give you a varied result when it comes to cutting dies. So keep that in mind. I watch a lot of videos when it comes to cutting dies, especially intricate designs, because I'm, you know, I've had problems with this over the years. And in the comment section, I see a lot of people say, well, that didn't work for me. That didn't work for me. You have to keep in mind, there are so many variables. It's trial and error, and you have to make note of what's working for you. Because like my, um, I use this, I use a big kick, the Sizzix big kick. Okay. The big red, we call it. And that machine is about 11 or 12 years old. So that's going to work different than a machine that's just now uh, being manufactured because it has had 11 to 12 years worth of use. So the pressure points on those rollers as I crank uh, is not the same as a new machine. So you have to keep all of that in account when you're working uh, with dies, okay? So there are so many factors, okay? So um, again, it's trial and error. It's kind of like when you're married to a man, mileage may vary. <laughs> And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, we gotta move on from that. Yes, your mileage may vary. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So let's get talking about three things. Review the supply, these Tim Holtz dies, the Spellbinders tool, and this Chrome Precision Base Plate. Now, if you don't wanna hear any more about this and seeing my results, uh, in a nutshell, this Chrome Precision Base Plate by Sizzix is something you need to look into. It is not too expensive. Um, there are different places selling it for different prices. So keep that in mind. It is something newer. So uh, if it's out of stock now, it will be coming. But there's one thing you have to remember, and it's the one that you get. The one you need to get is 660470. Again, 660. 
0470 would be in the description box below. I even try to link up a couple stores. That's the one you need. That's the newest version. And I think by far it's the best version. Okay. So let's talk about that. But if that is all you want to know, get one <laughs> because it does, it does work on your uh, intricate dies. It does help. It's a lot better than just doing the old sandwich way. But then even with that, I have to add something to that for my intricate intricate dies and that's the tim holtz ones that i just got so i'm going to talk about all that if you want to hang on but um that's the gist of it get one of these plates but get the right one it makes a difference okay so okay i wanted to pop in real quickly and talk about a couple things uh that you may have some questions about right now and so you don't have to go look for it. and i just wanted to include that in the video and that is what machines does this chrome precision base plate work for and there's a couple that it does not work for so you have to pay attention to that and you know when you get things online you don't always know so if you look at the back here which you don't get to see that online it says that it works with the big shot the big kick the vagabond and the big shot pro that you can use this it's all compatible but then it says in small print that you do not use this with the big shot fold away or the big shot plus machines you can't use this plate for that so there is a difference there okay and so then also to the price point i have seen this range from 15 dollars to 25 dollars that's a big difference in price range so definitely look at the stores but then also to where you get free shipping and where you don't get free shipping sometimes it can come in at a cheaper price but then if you got to pay seven eight dollar shipping then you might as well just get it where there's no uh no uh shipping and pay 25 so you know how that works so then the next question is can you use this in conjunction with your magnetic platform okay now, i'm not a big fan of the magnetic platform i think it's very expensive for what you get my opinion only um and i have not really used my magnetic platform what i thought i was going to but uh that's neither here nor there uh it is not recommended yet that you use this chrome precision base plate with your magnetic platform so you can always check into Sizzix for more about that and then also to cut marks okay so remember I said do not cut into this green <laughs> like I did you know there's some cut marks okay it is what it is but you cut on the chrome which is the opposite side here that shiny side okay the raccoon side so uh what was I saying <laughs> It's amazing that I have been using this for, um, you know, a bit now. There is not one single cut mark in my chrome. It's amazing how they came up with that. I don't know, but it's amazing. There's not one single cut mark. If I was to flip this over, and I, you can see I've been playing and playing, and I've been playing with it for some time here. There is not a single cut mark. It looks just like it did when I opened the package. How that works, I don't know, but Sizzix, you rock that. That's really good. So then some people were saying... So what you could do is, you know, because with our regular plates, you see how they turn out. You know, you get all these cut marks and then after a while they need replaced. So some people have been saying that why don't you just buy two of these and then you never have to buy cutting plates ever again. Now, for me, the jury is still all out on that because I don't know. This feels a little thicker than a regular cutting plate. So, you know, I don't know if that would work. And then also, you know... Sizzix hasn't recommended that, so I don't know. I mean, if uh, someone ever sees where Sizzix says that you can use two of these as your permanent cutting plates, let me know. But uh, as of right now, I would be a little leery of that. I would just hang on and get the final word from Sizzix because you wouldn't want something to happen to your machine and then it wouldn't be under warranty and things like that. So um, using two of these as your permanent cutting plates and never having to buy these puppies ever again, maybe down the road that will happen. So it would be definitely worth, worth it. So um, I just noticed that some people are doing that but I, like I said, the jury's still out on that. I would, I would hold on a little bit about that. So I definitely wanted to add what machines it works and the price point. So you don't have to go look for that info. I wanted to include that. So uh, now let's get back to seeing what my results were with this chrome base plate. Okay, hang on. Okay, so the old way of doing things is that we would take this multi-purpose platform and we would take a plate we would simply build a sandwich and so then we would take a piece of car, uh, paper and then our die and we would put our top plate to make our sandwich run that through okay and then of course over the years you know that sometimes you got to crank it through two or three times to get a good cut that's just what we had to do and then sometimes with that um 
even as designs came, you know, we had to change the way we do it because our designs are, our uh, designs on our dies are getting different. And this is what I mean. When we first started out, metal dies were just like this, basic shapes. And then they got a little bit more complex, got bigger, you know, better designs. And now we're looking at something like this. And now we're looking at something like this. <laughs> Look at that. That's the difference. That's the evolution of metal dies. So because of that evolution of these dies, we have to change our process, okay? And so again, trial and error. So uh, that's the old sandwich way. And with the old sandwich way, and I'm gonna just use these Tim Holtz uh, dies here, these crocheted thinlets, okay? Uh, the results I got using the old way, the sandwich way was this, okay? Not very good, folks. <laughs> Not very good. There's no way you can cut these Tim Holtz uh, intricate uh, dies with the old way of doing it. It just won't happen. Now, you can see that these uh, designs are still inset in the paper because that's how Tim designed them. Because he designed them that you can absolutely do a continuous uh, border. You just keep repeating that die, okay? I wish they popped out, but I understand why he did that. If you want to get a longer uh, cut, then you just keep repeating that. So you have to cut away that if you don't want any more than that length. Okay, so this is the old way. Those chads are in there. They are not, I mean, you'd have to really work. And even that, you know, you're going to have to get a pokey tool. For years, I just used a thumbtack, and then I uh, migrated up to this Spellbinders tool and one that has a pokey tool, and then it has this brush, okay? And so I will just talk about this. Uh, this is something that's worth the investment because a pokey tool was not going to cut it. And then when this first came out, <coughs> I told myself, I don't need one. I can just use a bottle brush, okay? And it'll do the same thing. And then it didn't work. And I said to my husband, oh, find me a wire brush at the tool store. No, that didn't work. So just save yourself some legwork. Buy yourself one of these two in one, be done with it. And when they first came out, Sizzix had, Sizzix had said how many bristles they went through to get the right bristle for this two in one. It was an, it was astronomical how many. And so you just run this over and you can also, um, you see how it'll help get those out, okay? And then you can also run that over your die if you have bits and pieces. And so that, it works really, really well for that. Okay, so that's that tool one. Highly recommend it. Get one, it's not too expensive, okay? Don't think a baby bottle brush is gonna work because it won't, okay? And so that was the old way of doing things, okay? So now, with the new way, it would be with this chrome plate, okay? And again, that will be listed below, 66. 0470. And why do I keep repeating that number? Because people are getting, um, I've been reading comments and people are saying, well, they're not liking it. They're not liking it and they're not getting the newest version. So, uh, I'm glad I saw those comments, uh, because I just thought a precision base plate was a precision base plate. But this one by Sizzix, the newest version is at 660470. So the new way then is just simply taking your platform Okay, and of course, whatever tab you need for whatever you're using. And of course, this is for thinlets, so I guess you would use that top one. And then you're going to replace your bottom sandwich with that. That's all you're going to do. And of course, you're going to keep the chrome side up. Okay, now I can't show that because we'd all need eye surgery by the time this is done. But you would not cut on this. You cut on the opposite side, which is that right there. Okay, now you can already tell on mine, I made a mistake one day. I actually cut into that. Uh, it's just because my mind was someplace else and I was running something through and I was like, this don't feel right. Yeah, I was cutting on the wrong side. So what you have to remember is that this little catchphrase, cut on the chrome. That's what you need to do. So you, you would be, when you built the sandwich, the chrome side would be up, which is why you need to uh, make a copy of these instructions and it clearly shows you the chrome needs to be up, okay? <clears throat> and so, excuse me, then you would just put your paper and then your die, okay? And then the top plate and you would run that through two times. For an intricate die, I think you need to run it through at least two times, and I'll show you my results here in a minute. Um, but I wanted to say with these uh, plates, and forgive me if I'm repeating, I've done this so many times. Um, my first one was 45 minutes long. No one wanted to hear that. So um, when you're uh, cycling through your plates, always use one on the bottom 
that has your worst cuts, okay? And cut into that one, okay? And then keep your nice one for the top one. And then when this one gets bad, then you just cycle through and then you would use a brand new one for the top, okay? So it's like a pair of sneakers. When you get a new pair in, you use that pair for the outside pair. You know what I'm talking about. So always keep your nicer plate on the top away from your cuts. And then it just, instead of replacing two at a time, you're only replacing one at a time. And how do you know when to replace these um, cutting pads? When you start seeing these cut marks and scratch marks, when you start seeing them show up on your cut, then you know it's time to change that plate. Okay, so back to uh, the new way with the chrome. And I was going to say that was, um, you know, the, the new way of doing things. But remember, in between there, we have used uh, paper shims. We've used wax paper. We've used fabric softener. Uh, we've actually used metal sheeting. We've used chipboard. We've used cardboard, all to get a better cut for these designs, okay? But now with these chrome, uh, chrome plates are, you know, trying to improve things. And so my results with these Tim Holtz dies using just the chrome blaze right here, just this, okay? And remember, you're going to cut with the chrome side up. Cut on the chrome. You don't cut on this pretty green side as I've already done, okay? But, you know, that's true life. So um, it is a better cut. It really, really is. I probably... Now, with this Tim Holtz set, you get two bigger and two smaller, which I'll just talk about that right now. In this Sizzix set... This is why sometimes ordering online is not always the best. I thought this was four different designs. It really isn't. It's just two designs in two different sizes, uh, one big, one small, but they're all pretty. Um, the, the ones that are bigger, you can see, let me get that piece of paper. I could pop that out pretty easily. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. See how they pop out pretty good. That smaller one, it's still not going to cut the cake. It is not going to work, okay? So let me just cut that out. And again, this is the uh, new Tim Holtz uh, crocheted thinlets with the new Sizzix Chrome Precision Base Plate, okay? Not too bad, not too shabby. I could, I could handle that, okay? But this, the smaller ones... There's no way. Mm -mm. Nope. So we're only halfway there. Okay. So even though I really suggest using the chrome base plate for your intricate dies, you're going to have to probably do another step. And uh, over the last um, while playing with these uh, Tim Holtz, um, what I've had to do is I've had to use fabric softener sheets. Okay. And so I'm going to talk about that. So if you want to hang on for that, and I'll show you my results with that. Okay. And so... Uh, I would say, as of right now, these Tim Holtz dies are definitely my most intricate that I have in my stash, okay? That's my most intricate. But before that, I had these Prima, okay? And you can see in my inventory binder, this Prima never did cut well for me. But using just this chrome base plate, again, there's my platform, there's my chrome, okay? The chrome would be up, and then just putting my dies on a piece of cardstock, putting a plate my nice plate on the top, running that through. Now this is what I'm getting. Look at that. Oh, big difference. Yes, a very, very big difference just by using that chrome plate. So it really is worth the money. I no longer have to use fabric softener sheets to um, use this die. I'm very, very happy about that. So uh, even though this is giving me fits, but I'll talk more about that. Um, to me, this chrome precision base plate, just for using these two doily dies, to me, has been worth it. Okay. Now, I will have to say, not all my dies are intricate, so I wouldn't need to use this chrome on every die. I can still just use the sandwich, uh, like these here by Heidi Swap and these by Crafters Companion. I don't need to use that because they cut out just fine. Okay. So you don't need to use it for every die, but isn't that pretty? Oh boy, I really like that. Of course, I like I like that green. Uh, anyways, so I'm very very tickled um, that this has now uh, stepped up the game for these Prima Dooley dies. I know you longer have to use fabric softener in order to use these because no matter what I used before, um, it just didn't. They just I couldn't get a good cut, and I am not going to sit there and poke out all those holes. No. So just one run through on one of those chrome precision base plates. That's my results. Love that. Okay, so now let's go back to the Tim Holtz using the chrome. Okay, and so, of course, what we're going to do, platform, chrome, with a shiny side up. Okay, because we're going to cut on the chrome. Okay, and I would put these here. 
okay and I did four all four because you know why not if you're already gonna crank it through might as well get as much as you can and so then I would put uh, my plate on the top okay and I would run that through twice okay so then when that comes out of the machine it's gonna look like this okay now bear with me for a minute this is what it's gonna look like okay and we have uh, let's see we have this one here and then we have this one okay and this is what it would look like after I ran it through okay so while these dies are still in the paper I would then take away the chrome plate and then I have to use my fabric softener sheets okay now let's talk about that for a minute I have them right here now some people will absolutely um, not uh, they do not like to use fabric softener sheets and there's a big controversy about that about whether you should use wax paper on your dies whether you should use fabric softener sheets on your dies and I say you do you okay you need to do what you need to do in order to be able to get your money's worth out of these tools and I find in my opinion most people that are saying and I'm talking manufacturers here that are saying you shouldn't use fabric softener sheets on your dies or wax paper or whatever or shims or whatever it's because they want to sell you another product my opinion only okay I have used fabric softener sheets with these Prima uh, dies for years I have not had any issue whatsoever but again mileage may vary you use your own judgment so with a fabric softener sheet is for an intricate die and this is what I've had to do for years uh, for these Prima is that you simply are going to take four number four fabric softener sheets okay now some people say you need unscented and you need this you need that no use what you have I mean honestly it's not rocket science you just take four fabric softener sheets and you fold them in half so it really is going to give you eight layers of fabric softener sheet okay and then you're going to just input that in your regular sandwich okay you're going to forget about the chrome okay you're going to go back to the old school so there's my platform there's the bottom one of my uh, base plate you know my sandwich not my base plate I'm sorry my cutting plate I got so many things going on and so then I would simply take this okay now remind yourself I've already ran this through on my chrome okay and these dies are still in the paper so the second step to get these intricate dies to work is that now I got to run it through again with fabric softener sheets okay this is my results this is what's working for me and this is what I will use in order for me to use these Tim Holtz because just using this chrome plate two of these dies will never get used because they just don't cut good enough okay so after I would take off the dies and guess what you notice there's nothing in those dies there is nothing in those dies for me to even use this spellbinders tool there's just no chance in there I mean there's I can't say that enough <laughs> love that one step gone okay this is the fabric softener hack okay so then with that is that and you can see I'll flip it over okay because I already ran this through right there's my fabric softener sheet so what it does is just really flattens them and it just gives it another little um, of a bit of a cushion um, for these little chads to hang on to so I'm going to peel these up okay now this again was with using the chrome running that through twice and then replacing the chrome on the second run with fabric softener sheets okay and I will have a video linked below that will show more about that uh, if you're interested in that okay again I know fabric softener sheets is very controversial <laughs> It's a very controversial subject among scrapbookers, crafters. Look at that. Where's my paper? Look at that. I mean, there is nothing to take out of that die, and there's nothing to take out of the image. Come to Mama, sing hallelujah, we have a winner. <laughs> yes, again, and that is using the chrome plate, and then after a run through the chrome, with the chrome plate, then... Um, I had to cut these out of here. Uh, then you, I use the fabric softener sheets. Look at that. Just look at that. I mean, look at, I just can't say enough, okay? But I will say I'm very happy using the chrome with these Prima. No fabric softener sheets needed. But with these Tim Holtz, I'm using my chrome plate, but it's still not enough. I still have to use the fabric softener hack. Uh, for that okay but for what the results are I will happily do it and the reason why I'll happily do it is because I don't have to do this fabric softener sheet hack for every die I own it's just this Tim Holtz set okay the chrome plate here that corrected this one okay 
Um, but these, um, like I said, these Tim Holtz, they're the most intricate ones I own. And so I'm going to have to use the fabric softener hack to do that. Okay, I'm going to peel one more because it's like magic, people. That's exactly what it is. It's like magic, okay? And so that's what that is. I'll show that one too. Look at that. I don't even have to take out my pokey tool for anything. I mean, it's already done. I, I just love the fabric softener hack. Again, I know it's not for everybody. Do not leave me any comments below that you think we should not use fabric softener sheets. And I look at it this way. If I can use a fabric softener sheet and get my money's worth out of these dies rather than them sitting in my stash never getting used, yeah, I'm going to use a fabric softener sheet. I'll use wax paper. I'll use whatever I have to. Um, so that is the results with the fabric softener sheet. And then you can tell... Okay, most of those uh, those little bits and bobs, look at those tiniest bits and bobs all right there on the fabric softener sheet. And you can reuse those, okay? You can see I've been playing all day. I You can reuse them, okay? It's not just using them one and throwing it away. But the beauty is now with the addition of this new Sizzix Chrome Precision Base Plate, you may not have to use the fabric softener sheet on some of your dies, okay? But I would say your more intricate, intricate, you know, your second level of intricate dies, you still may have to use the fabric softener uh, hack. And so for me, the Tim Holtz, they're definitely going to have to still use the fabric softener sheets. But that's okay because this is worth it, okay? I mean, just look at that, okay? So all in all, let's talk about review the supply, okay? The Chrome Precision Base Plate, you need to pick up. It's definitely going to make a difference in your die cutting. But if you have intricate, intricate dies like these Tim Holtz, you still may have to do another level of cutting. Whatever that would be for you, for me, it's the fabric softener sheet hack because I love that. Because for years, that was the only way I could ever use these. Okay, so I'm already used to using fabric softener sheets. But again, I don't use it on every die. It's just the few that I have that are really, really tough and really, really hard. And then also, too, if you're having a die, even if it's not intricate and it's giving you fits, try the fabric softener sheet hack. It may work for you. And then uh, review the supply. Uh, the two-in-one, definitely need to get it uh, if you're with these intricate um, because uh, this is just much easier than this. Just using a thumb a thumbtack or um, whatever, you know, sitting there with a push pin. Yeah, you just, you need one of these. They're not that expensive, okay? I asked for one in my stocking one year, and that's how I got mine. Yes, it has a, comes with a pokey tool. So, yes, uh, this uh, Spellbinders two-in-one. Two, uh, two uh, definitely worth the money. This Chrome Precision Blaze, two thumbs up. Now, let's talk about these Tim Holtz Thinlets. Hmm. I wish I didn't have to use the fabric softener sheets with them, but, you know, what do you think? They're very, very pretty. I know I will use them, but I also know that in the back of my mind, whenever I see these, this is a two-step process die. I'm going to have to run it through with my Chrome plate and then I'm going to have to run it through again with fabric softener in order for me to use them. In order for me to use them because I'm too lazy, I will not sit there and I will not poke them out. Okay? So I have to tell myself and I know every time I see them I'm going to be like Ugh, yeah, that's two steps. <laughs> that's two steps. So I think what I will do is exactly what I'm doing today. I'm just sitting here and I'm just uh, pun look how many I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing this um, for the last few hours. I've just been sitting here playing with my dies. So what I will do is I will get this out and I will just play with it for a while, have all of these ready to go. I'll probably just use white because that's what I think about. Um, but you could do it with black or ivory and just do a group at a time, okay? And then that's one way to combat having to use that second step. Uh, every time you want to use that die. Just do a bunch at a time, okay? So that is how uh, we're going to uh, talk about, review the supply of this chrome plate, these uh, new Tim Holtz uh, crocheted thinlets, and this two-in-one. Um, I would say those two are a must-have now if you're getting into uh, intricate dies. I uh, Again, you need them. You need both of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really highly recommend a lot of things, um, but those are two things I'm going to say. They're almost... Um, almost half the halves. Yes, yeah, so when you're having dies, because our dies are getting more intricate, I think these are basically uh, basic tools now. Yes. And so again, that chrome plate is 660470. That is the one you need. That's the newest version. And do not make my mistake. Do not cut on the green side. You cut on the chrome. Absolutely. Uh, so, but with the Tim Holtz, um, I would say... 
this would be something I would recommend if you were getting it as a gift. <laughs> yes, or you can get it on sale. Yes, uh, because of that two-step. Um, it's pretty, but, you know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to have to do two steps to cut out a die. So that is, that's my consensus there. Okay, so that is all I have for today for this chit-chat of this cutting intricate dies. How, uh, some just things I've been learning. I mean, look at all the ones I have. Yeah, I've been playing and playing and playing. Yes. Uh, so um, if you are having luck with... Um, cutting out some intricate uh, dies. What have you been using? Okay. Have you got this new uh, Sizzix chrome plate? Um, what do you think about that? Have you gotten these new Tim Holtz uh, crochet dies? What do you think? And what do you think about this two in one by Spellbinders? What do you think of that? Uh, let's just have a discussion below and uh, yeah, let's just keep on talking and review the supply. So that is all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.